My name is Reverend Troy Perry, and uh, people probably know me best as the founder of the Metropolitan Community Churches, a worldwide denomination uh, that is in uh, 38 countries now on every continent except Antarctica. And um, they know me secondly as the founder of one of the three founders of the first gay pride parade in the world here in Los Angeles, California. I was born July the 27th, 1940, in Tallahassee, Florida. My father was the biggest bootlegger in North Florida, but I didn't know that as a kid. At age 12, my father was killed in a car wreck. Uh, I loved church. Church was so much to me. Now, people today would probably say, well, it was escapism for you because later you had problems. But no, I had always gone to church. Well, I'd felt a call to the ministry. I'm 13 years old. My aunt invited me to preach in her little Pentecostal church. She said, uh, God's going to use you mightily, but not in the denomination you think. And I thought, she's crazy. Why, you know, why is she saying all this? One day I went in and talked to my pastor and said, I have these funny feelings. And he said, well, tell me about them. And after about an hour, his eye just lit up and he said, oh my goodness, I know what you're trying to tell me. And all you need to do is get married and have a good woman. That'll take care of that problem. Well, I married his daughter. <laughs> Wasn't funny or flippant five years later when we went through the divorce. But I thought, they know. They're telling me that this will cure me and it'll work. But it didn't. Coming out as a gay person, that torture that still lived inside of me. What does the Bible say? What does God feel? All the questions that if you're a religious person, you wrestle with. If you're a spiritual person, you wrestle with it. Whether you're religious or spiritual, there's still questions there in your heart and your mind. For me, it wasn't easy. I just kept trying to find, how do I get past this? I kept going back to church. It was even worse being now a gay religious person. <laughs> then it dawned on me, wait a minute. If God loves me, God will love other gay folk too. That was the next revelation in my head. Now I know I'm a Christian again, but I'm trying to live out my Pentecostal Southern Baptist background in a gay bar. Nobody in the gay community is interested in religion. I said, well, I don't care. I am. I knelt and I prayed. And I said, uh, God, I keep witnessing to people, but people don't believe you can love them. Well, you love me, and I'm a homosexual, so you can love them. I said, Lord, you know, if you want to see a church started, a church that has a special outreach to the gay and lesbian community. I said, you know, but it's doors open to everybody. You just let me know when. I told my roommate, Willie Smith, what I'd done. I said, I've taken out the ad. I'm serious. I said, I have prayed about this, and that's the way it's going to be. He freaked out. He said, oh, my God, you've taken out an ad in a homosexual newspaper giving our home address? The police are going to be down at the ends of the, the streets scooping up in, in nets when they come here. I said, well, I don't care. On October the 6th, 1968, 12 people showed up in the living room of my home. And I thought, you know, this is a view of things to come. After the service, the, one of the person came and said, you preached like there were a thousand people here this morning. I said, there will be. And uh, he said, I just couldn't believe over the way you just had this dream and you just stuck with it. Quickly, I learned it was not just inviting people to church. It was really a revolutionary act. It didn't take me long to find out how bad things were for gay people. People would come in and talk to me. They were just interested. They came. They couldn't believe what MCC was doing. And out of Huntington Park, we, in six weeks, um, quickly moved out of our home and moved into the women's club in Huntington Park. Well, the crowds just kept coming. And I got up and told everybody, we're going to see the laws change. We're going to move. We're going to work. We're going to make a difference. We're putting legs on our prayers. It's one thing to pray, but then you got to do something about it. And uh, we started... And you know what? The 
crowds just kept getting larger and larger. 